Let's talk about the root of the problem. People choose profit over integrity. Injustice has been ignored and it's been left to linger. Now we're seeing the cascading effects of all these injustices. We're talking about people driven to the streets because their grievances just go unheeded. The powers that be don't change. And it gets to the point where they have very little to lose. They're so focused on the symptoms and individual activities and actions of people who are participating that we miss the underlying causes that drove people to the streets in the first place. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. These men who meet in secret and plot the manipulations are going to do it whether we want it or not, and they're going to do it at the point of a gun. Mm -hmm. and they're going to take away everybody's freedom because they don't consider us responsible. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you. This is a scandal about the business model of these banks, which is actually lie more. Mm -hmm. L-I-E. <laughs> lie more. I like that. That's good. That's that's what's going on here. They will do and say anything. So I regard the Federal Reserve as one of the most transparent central banks in the world. Uh, we that's a statement. What, what, what do you fear about the audit? The mysterious problem of how the brain learns. According to federal statistics, the upper half of the American people take home 90% of income, leaving about 10% for the lower half of Americans. Where are we headed in this country in terms of income disparity? The Fed doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't have direct responsibility for these issues. Hi, I'm Jay Powell. I print money like a maniac. Come on down to the Fed's bargain basement. We'll give you a trillion dollars right now. You got some old baseball cards? Fair to say you simply flooded the system with money. Yes, we did. That's another way to think about it. We did. Where does it come from? Do you just print it? We print it digitally. So we, you know, we, as a central bank, we have the ability to create money. Yeah, get it. Take it. Take some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ordering the printing of United States notes which would have broken the back of the Federal Reserve, which is one of the major instruments of propelling the United States into the New World Order by destroying our, our economy, the basis upon which we live. In 2008 and 2009, nations poured unprecedented money into the system to prevent its collapse. At the very least, unprecedented inflation will surely follow. The same people who did that, the same executives with the same business model that crashed the entire financial system in 08 are still running these banks. You know, Diamond didn't mm -hmm. just get to Barclays. He was there throughout the uh, run-up and the good times through the scandal. About potential transactions that involved slavery between J.P. Morgan or its heritage companies uh, back in the 1800s. In fact, there was an indication, I believe, that uh, you accepted loans against uh, slaves as collateral, true? I believe that to be true, yes. Because the entire business model is corrupt and rotten to its core. So they'll put us in shackles and control us and force us to be peaceful. Mm -hmm. That's what the plan is and that's what the New World Order is all about. A New World Order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. You have to understand the difference between capitalism, socialism, communism, what all of these things really mean. Um, you have to understand that, uh, that uh, w what the difference is between right wing and left wing. People, they use these phrases all the time and they don't even know what these things mean. And it's just incredible to me to hear a socialist calling someone else a Nazi. Because Nazi means national socialism. So here's a socialist calling a right-wing guy a Nazi when he, what he should be calling the right-wing guy is anarchist. As early as 1928, the communists declared that the racial differences among our people constituted the weakest and most vulnerable point in our social fabric. 
by constantly probing and straining at this one spot, and that Americans could be divided, weakened, and perhaps even set against each other in open combat. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! The moment all these movements will be directed in one direction, right? This is the time to catch that movement and to continue it until the movement forces the whole society into collapse, into crisis, right? By the way, it's the same big club they used to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. Well, why do you think the Federal Reserve bankers control uh, the major television uh, networks? Because they only want their propaganda to go out to the people. They realize that three days on television could inform all the American people of everything that's gone on. It's got to be uh, the very nature of this whole idea of the Stockholm Syndrome, where the person who's been kidnapped falls in love with their captor. The American people have been kidnapped by the banking system, and now they're defending the banking system while the banking system steals their money in the form of driving interest rates low to bail out banks who have kept afloat this enormous slush fund scheme, unnumbered accounts that are uh, simply there, to launder money, uh, launder losses. We mustn't kid ourselves into thinking that the communists have placed their agitators only into the black communities. They're working both sides of the street. They want hatred, violence, and bloodshed between the races, and they don't care how they get it or whom they use, even children if necessary. This makes the Negro neighborhood a police state. It's the, it's the most heavily patrolled. It has more police in it than any other neighborhood. Yet it has more crime in it than any other neighborhood. How can you have more cops and more crime? Why? It shows you that the cops must be in cahoots with the criminals. So you are seeing the destruction of the economy of the United States. And it will continue. It will not get better. It's downhill from here on out. Unless we nationalize the Federal Reserve lock up the criminals who own it, cancel the debt, which will then bankrupt the Illuminati, which is exactly what we ought to do, print constitutional money, which cannot be usurped, which cannot lead to our destruction, and go back to, to, to what we're supposed to do, and quit contracting for benefits. Crisis is when society cannot function any more productively, it collapses, obviously. That's the, the word for crisis. This was all intended to support the consumer society. And that, that died on October 19th. So all of this is gone. The whole just-in-time transport system is gone. The deep state is essentially out of control. It's unconstrained. Since 9-11, we have built the equivalent of three pentagons mm around the D.C. metropolitan area. We must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific, technological elite. And there's a group of people right now that are engineering this, that are thinking about how do we achieve this goal here of making it to sci-fi world within those 18 years, and how do we get 3% of the people to see this vision? And, and that is, is actually the conspiracy that's going on right this instant in the background. For every old blackboard, there are now hundreds of new electronic computers. The prospect of domination of the nation's scholars by federal employment, project allocations, and the power of money is ever present and is gravely to be regarded. The Pentagon, it's Homeland Security, it's the State Department, uh, it's also Treasury because they have a kind of symbiotic relationship with Wall Street. They are sucking money out of the economy as our infrastructure collapses. Tens of millions of people are on food stamps 
we incarcerate th more people than China, an authoritarian state with four times our population. And finally, there are a small group of agents of a foreign nation bought, subverted, recruited, right? And they have been working behind the scenes to bring about a one-world totalitarian socialist government with the Communist Manifesto as its platform. We uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are uh, super uh, versed um, on sort of ideological theories. And I think that what we really try to do is build a movement that could be utilized by many, many black folk. If you study the structure of the Negro community, mm -hmm. economically, politically, civically, psychologically, and otherwise, it's controlled by the white liberal, mm -hmm. who usually poses as the friend of the Negro. And here we are. We have a savior. Either a foreign nation comes in, or the local group of, of leftists, Marxists, no matter what they call themselves. Along the route, they came across a cache with neatly stacked bricks and shovels. Four protesters wearing all black clothing and backpacks converged on the supplies and worked together to peel back the fencing. Let's have a strong government, maybe socialist government, centralized. When, when somebody put, put the employers on their place and, and let us work, we are sick and tired of going to strike and, and missing overtime and all that stuff. We need some strong man, strong government, a leader. John F. Kennedy was a threat to the national security, which translated into reality means was a threat to the New World Order, the one world government which they were uh, actively um, in the process of forming. It is a hybrid of corporate America and the national security state. Everyone knows what uh, the military-industrial complex is since Eisenhower talked about it in his farewell address. And so those people that are actually thinking and planning and are uh, now uh, for government in holes in the ground are deciding what your sci-fi world is going to be like. And from within, they are eating at the heart of this nation like a cancer, this secret society. They are destroying it. They are subverting it. Corruption in our, they're not even banks really, they're finance and trading companies. Let's call them what they are. They hide behind the label banks, but they're not really banks. All these big bankers and all these big rich people who have caused a lot of the problems we've had for the last few years are not getting prosecuted. Uh, therefore, we go after this criminal syndicate, we put them out of business, and what we do is we liberate the people. It would be a new revolution. Bitcoin itself is an existential threat to the central bankers. That's what this was designed. It was designed as an alternative financial system. Obviously, if you can't trust the system, you've got to opt out of that system, right? I would say Libra was something of a, uh, lit a bit of a fire. We, this is something we've been focused on digital currencies for you know, a couple decades, but it's really lit a fire around the world right now. So we are doing a great deal of work. I don't like the idea, and both parties, you have politicians to say, what we've learned is we can print all the money we want. Right. We don't have to raise taxes, we just print. When it comes to fiat, the exits are Bitcoin and crypto. Question, what would, it, what would it mean if China had a digital currency that had fairly wide adoption, including two other countries? We've got to ask that. I think we've all got, also got to ask, what if a, what if a private sector entity you know, a large company with a large network of users has a, has a digital currency. And they understand that they really only need to get 3%. And if they can get 3% of the people to have a good vision of this, uh, those 3% will bring along with them um, 8 to, to 10%, and that's all that's required to change the course of humanity and the future. We must keep the people busy with political antagonisms. We will therefore speed up the question of reform of tariffs within the Democratic Party, and will put the spotlight on the question of protection for the Republican Party. By dividing the electorate this way, we'll be able to have them spend their energies at struggling amongst themselves on questions that for us have no importance whatsoever. Okay. So socialism always leads to repression of liberty, freedom, equality, 
all of those things fly out the window so that you can have free health care, mm -hmm. so that you can have a place to live but you don't have to pay the rent, so that you can have food given to you by the state. At that stage, the self-appointed rulers of the society don't need any revolution anymore. They don't need any radicalism anymore. So this is the reverse from destabilization. Basically, it is stabilizing the country by force. So all the sleepers and activists and social workers and liberals and homosexuals and professors and Marxists and Leninists are being eliminated physically sometimes. They've done their job already. This will be the sixth time we have destroyed it. If you look into history, we're having another Weimar Republic. They're just going to print money so they can try to stay in control. At the end, if you print too much, you end up in something like Venezuela. What we need to do is stop trying to go way over here and establish some utopia of freedoms are way over here to establish some repression of freedom so that we make sure that we got something on the table to eat mm -hmm. and strike a balance between the two that works and stop withholding information and the word president is always a word that is used in corporate law banks have presidents all companies have presidents so there's a corporation called United States privately owned and it has a president. President Bush is not the president of America. President Bush is the president of a privately owned company. Privately owned, out of England. And until we start sending bankers, and I include central bankers and politicians, to prison for this outrage, it will continue. Regardless of all the damage that has been done by these people, by their insidious plotting, by their paranoid conspiracies, uh, that can be corrected. The American people are still sound. I have total faith in the people of this country. And you need to understand words and terms. Because I believe that there is a divine presence in the universe that men call God. And one day that divine presence is going to move on the earth and we're going to see freedom come back to this world. And when it does, you're going to need to understand words and terms and how they have been used to trick you. Thank you.